Let's look at how to do a bubble sort using an array. So first of all, I want to have an array. And we'll make an integer array to make it nice and clean and easy. So I'll go an array. And my array is going to be just a series of numbers. And because I want to go from, let's say, smallest to largest, I'm going to just have my array be a largest to smallest so you can see how everything looks if it is the reverse order so that you can see each step of the way how the array looks all right first of all i want to have a function that will display the contents of the array and just kind of go through iterate over it and display it so i get a void uh, display array and I'll pass an array and that's what I'm going to do there. And then I'm going to have a next one, just do a sort bubble sort. And that one's going to be a void bubble sort. And I will just pass an array as well. But I think for each of these, I also want to indicate a size as well so maybe a count so that I can know when to stop All right so I will go ahead and write these functions now I'll start with the display and then I will write the sort and I can use the display in the sort so you can see each step of the way and how it looks so for this one I do in for loop and i equals zero i is less than count i plus plus and i will just go ahead and print out each letter Let's see how it or each number i guess and array i and probably a space afterwards and that way we can get it nice and pretty looking and we're gonna have a trailing space but that's okay we won't worry about that all right so that's done uh, i'm gonna go ahead and test that one out so I'll do display array, pass it my array, and I have nine things in there. I can take out this line right here and we'll run it and make sure it works. So you can see nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It prints out. So what I'm gonna do is the bubble sort goes through and what it does is it looks at each pair of numbers one at a time. So we got the first and the second one. And if the first one out of the two is higher, it'll swap them. If it's lower, it'll keep them the same. And then it'll look at the next pair and it'll swap them and swap them. Just keep going through and swapping them. And so each iteration as you go through you count the number of swaps you make and if you make at least one swap that means you're not done you have to do another iteration over the entire thing and each time you're going to have things that bubble to the front or i guess the heavy one is going to sink to the bottom or bubble to the right so let's go ahead and get started here so first i take my array and I want to have an extra variable, so swaps. And we'll use that. And then I'll have a while loop. So while, and let's say swaps equals, well, actually I do do while. So do. And then while swaps is greater than zero so if there's no swaps then we can break out we'll do swaps equals zero to get started 
So what do I do? I have a for loop that loops over the entire array. So do for and i equals zero. i is less than count minus one because I don't need to do anything after count and I don't want to have compare each number i to the one right after it. So the new i plus plus. So then I'm looking at each item in the array. In the reality, I can actually shrink the number of things to look at because at the end of the first round, the very largest number will be at the back of the array. So I could be shrinking down and just kind of do one less each time. And that would work. But we'll go ahead and count swaps. So we'll do if array i is greater than array i plus one, then we need to swap them. So then we need one more integer temp. So let's go ahead and put that in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take temp and we're going to put one of the numbers in it and then we can move the other one over. So we'll say array i, it gets assigned to temp, and then array i, the value grabs the one from array i plus one, and then we're going to put array i plus one, we're going to put temp right into that. So we just swap them around and we're basically moving array i plus one into array i, but we needed to save it. So we saved it and now we drop it into the i plus one. At this point, because we made a swap, we want to add one here. That means we know we did a swap. And so after each round, we want to display what our array looks like. So we'll do a display array and we'll pass it our array and the count that we receive. And so we can see what happens when we use the bubble sort. Now I'm just going to run bubble sort after displaying it and we'll see how this thing works. All right, so I run this, and if we make this a little bit, expand this section a bit, you can see the first time it goes through, it's nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then you can see the nine sunk all the way to the bottom, and you can see that all the other numbers are still in place, and you can see each round, one more number sinks to the bottom, and so, you are effectively slowly getting through it. And then the very last round, like so after this round, it is completely sorted. However, because we did swap the two and the one right here, we had to go through this round and it got done right there at the end. It has to do one last check at the end just to make sure there are no more swaps. So you can see how many swaps it does, but eventually everything is sorted. And this is basically how the bubble sort works. You basically go through it and you just swap things one at a time until it is all sorted.